Hi guys, Eric here, Leo there. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but today is all about how we put together the... <laughs> ah, this is what it's like. Today is all about how I put together the bathroom. So this was one of the biggest projects of this van build and Leo really? And when I was researching, as is often the case, there was no one who had really done this process from start to finish. So I wanted to put together a video that went from the very start, the foundational, before we had even put the walls up all the way through to the finished product so that you guys can see exactly what went into every single step along the way so that if you're looking for something like this you may not build it exactly the same but at least then you have some sort of reference as to what everything looks like on the inside and the sort of stuff that's required so all right on with the build so with some incredible help from will and michelle we are getting through this task pretty quickly now which is good and um, i kind of needed that kick up the bum yesterday i think We've got right all the way down the back, another pole just sort of falling out. We're going to take out this whole wall, probably this whole wall, all the way around with a new wall, a new shower fitting, new taps, new everything, and we just replaced a lot because I think that's going to be the better way to go because we can't have water damage around the shower because you don't want someone in the shower and then falling through the back of the van. Not much fun. Oh yeah, this is all good to go now. Yeah. Yeah. Now to just get it going. Check out that crustiness down the back of <laughs> <Go on. laughs> Hello, so today we are redoing the bathroom and we've basically just put up the metal studs similar to what we did in the other room and then filled it with the foam. Um, this is expandable foam, you can get it in a can and the can looks uh, something like that. Basically you spray and uh, in it goes. So after that we have uh, just secured that in place up the top into the existing studs that are still strong enough. Uh, we've got a metal stud here so that's even better. That's kind of the, the framework of the entire van. And then I've just put in these um, wooden 3x1s they're called. Um, and I've gone into our new metal ones and into one of the existing um, studs down the bottom as well. Um, and I've just framed up the window and then what we're going to do is panel over the top of this entire thing with a bit of poly sheet as well just so that we definitely keep that vapor barrier. Um, I could have done it underneath. I don't really know why I didn't but um, but I'm definitely going to put it in before those um, outer boards go up. And we're going to be doing um, like a corrugated iron finish. So this line, this line and this line on the walls um, and putting these up we're going to put some more a little bit further across, build a little bit of a false wall box for the shower head to come out. And then the corrugated iron will kind of, because it can bend, it's quite a good material. You can go across and then bend it at 90 degrees and then bend it at 90 degrees again. And uh, it just means that all that will be boarded up. We'll probably do like plywood or something, just board it up to keep the vapor barrier stuck down but uh, it will mean that it's all kind of hidden in behind there. So that all you see is like the shower head and maybe the taps and that sort of stuff. And that's it. And we'll use the existing bath because it's a good enough unit. But at the moment it looks like a bit of a mess, but uh, work in progress. Looks 
good. And just overlap it if you're doing it. Just make sure you overlap it a little bit. I'm using a staple gun. Uh, this is just a small little cheapie, but it does the job. I am just going to put in one little bit of seal, which is this thing. I kept that from the original design, which was um, just to keep this bottom section on. So I'm just going to put that back on. I just kept those aside all this time. So I can put it back on and then um, then we can put the rest of the wall structure on. So today I am putting together the shower and finishing off the bathroom hopefully. Well, today. Um, it's another one of those tasks where I have absolutely no idea how to do this, or I had no idea, um, and then felt really uncomfortable in the hardware store trying to work it out. Um, but I'm finally, I think, getting my head around it, which is cool. Um, I've got like my instructions <laughs> everywhere, I've got all my little pieces that I'm going to need. I've kind of laid it out in a visual way so that I can see it, and now I'm bringing it all back together. So I can put it all together now. Here's what we're dealing with at the moment. We've basically got two taps and I've put little PEX connectors on them. Um, I need to still thread those with uh, plumber's tape, so I'll do that in a minute. But uh, yeah, getting these first bits sorted, they're just kind of resting in there. So that basically needs to go up to two pipes, one either side, and this is this is called PEX. Um, it's like just a round hole, and then you use a little clamp thingy um, that looks a little like that and you stick them on that way and then you clamp it into those metal grooves that you can see down in there. That's the plan is to try and make it kind of tall enough or at least as tall as it will go so that uh, so that I fit in there because I am over six foot so it's um, often like with camp showers and stuff I'm like I'm bending my neck down the hunchback of Notre Dame thing. So let's get started let's put some pipes together, make some connections. All right, so I've got this tool. This is a, uh, I think it's got a crimping tool. Basically it like pinches these little metal things. You can see there. And you stick that in that gap, apparently. This is according to the instructions, which I just read. Uh, give it a good squeeze. I'll just leave it. I think that's I think that's that. Cool. So that's how you do that. So because the plastic connections don't twist on, um, I'm doing all the twisted connections first, so that by the time it comes to the PEX ones, I can just sort of throw them over the top and get them done. Nice and tight. I'll just put a little bit of plumber's tape there to seal that thread in. Those are not going anywhere, so that's good. Got all my little connections on. So basically it comes hot in this side, cold in that side, I think it is. Oh, I'll work it out in a minute. And then straight up out of here, and there's your handle. And that will sit sort of on the front, whatever way that goes. To be worked out. And then now I've got these little right angle pieces, and they're just the PEX stuff, so plastic to plastic. Um, basically you can't bend it so you have to work with right angles so if you've got two pipes coming out of the ground and you're going into a unit like this make sure you get that bend one so basically you can attach a tiny bit of plastic there and a bit of plastic there back into the hose the same on the other side and then out the top now because my hoses are pretty close together already um, what I'm gonna do is just put in like a tiny tiny piece like that um, so it'll just be like that on both sides um, because they're really close to each other anyway. I could probably even make them smaller. Like that's, even that is too big. Um, so just keep that in mind that if your pipes are already pretty close to each other, you only have to use a tiny little one. Make the little right angle, and then uh, we'll put only a small amount as well down to uh, pipes that are already there. And uh, that will be that, I think. So uh, kind of looks professional, doesn't it? I think I knew what I was doing. All right, bit of research, right? 
I think that's what's interesting is that um, on Facebook, someone recently was like, is there anything you guys can't do? And I'd say like, yeah, yesterday I couldn't do this because I didn't have a clue how to do it. Um, but with a bit of research, a bit of YouTubing or a bit of um, looking it up online or just asking someone, um, you can pretty quickly understand most things. Like we live in the information age, guys. Like it's not that hard to, you can do it on the spot in a hardware store. Open up your phone, Google what you need to do. So I, I literally pulled this out of the, um, the box. I was like, oh, that one looks all right. Pulled it out of the box, looked at these pictures and went, okay, how do I build that? And then went and asked um, one of the custom service reps and they helped me out. Again, that bit, I've just built another little tiny one. They don't have to be even, they're, they're close enough, but the, um, the hoses aren't that accurate anyway. So there you go, look at that. Got our little right angle piece. So now we just need to, I think it's called crimping or clamping or whatever it is, using the metal thing. Uh, we need to stick those together basically. And then we will create the, uh, the bit from the hose, connecting up into these. And then we use our long bit. And away we go. How good's that? Now, if you are working with an RV, one of the difficult things to do is work out on coal. So here's an easy way to work that out. If you look at your pipes down here, you've got one that runs to the toilet. So that's this one here. And they're not going to put hot water into the toilet, so that means that logically you've just worked it out. So that means this one's cold and that one's hot. Now, the guy in the shop said you could buy like white conduit stuff and then um, red and black. I just chose to write cold and hot so that I wouldn't get it confused. Um, and now when I put it on, it just tells me which one's cold and which one's hot. So that's my little hack for the day. good I think it's just about done so that will go there it goes all the way up it's a nice tall shower right at the top now a quick word on this tool there were I found this in a clearance bin at Home Depot so I absolutely scored yeah try and get one of these sort of crimping tool things this one's called Sir Lock it did the job it's okay there were there were ones in the shop that were like 175 bucks I mean I've just used this two three four five six seven eight no, maybe 10 times, nine times, that's it. It's such a specific tool um, that if you know anyone who's done renovations, especially on bathrooms and that sort of stuff, they've probably got one and it's probably fairly untouched. So um, ask around, see if people have it. At the end of our journey, I'm just gonna donate it to um, Restore. Now, one of the things that I was a little bit concerned about was how I was gonna get these fixtures in. And the good thing is, I didn't plan this, I was just going to make it up when I got there. But the good thing is, let me set you down. This thing is taller than the corrugation itself, which means we can cut a hole, put this through and just cork it around the outside. And we're going to get that finish that we want where it's embedded into the wall and we don't have to build another plate and face it out. Another thing that I kept from the original was these trims that kind of go over the wood. I'm going to make it look copper. So I've just bought some copper spray paint. We're just gonna spray it down. I think we're kind of almost there. Um, one of the things that has to go up before the corrugated bit goes up is all the, the wooden boards. So I'll have to do the ceiling and the wall before I put that in, but um, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so our ceiling is now in. We've got our lights in and on, which is great. It's all looking very wooden in here. <laughs> we also need to build some sort of structure here, maybe like a box that comes off the wall uh, so that we can put our pieces through that and fix it to it. Um, and I'll do that next. Screwing it in would be a good idea. Today I'm installing the final part of our bathroom, which is going to be this corrugated plastic or polycarbonate rather, which is what I found out the hard way. I thought it was just plastic, um, but it's actually for the roofing stuff. So it's a much stronger kind of plastic, um, which means that if you try and use like a Stanley knife or a um, sharp blade, you are going to crack it 
which I found out the hard way. So, the best thing I've found to do is to use a some sort of power tool that has heat. So anything with like a hot cut um, is going to do a much cleaner cut. Master craft, master craft, this thing. All right, I just worked it out. So it's called a rotary tool and it basically has a whole bunch of tiny little heads. Now the two that I'm using is a standard sander. So that is usually for wood, but of course plastic being a much more malleable surface, it just cuts through it like butter, which is great. And guys, I just kind of made up this process. I had a vision in my head for what I wanted it to look like at the end. Um, and so I'm just kind of getting it done and making it work. So yeah, I've basically just continued to go round and round um, with that same tool. I just have to take a little bit off up here because it's hitting at the top. So I want that to be nice and flush all the way around. done. Check that out. So there you have it. That is the remodeled shower and bathroom. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. And as always, you can subscribe if you haven't already. And you can like this video. Hit the little bell if you'd like more of the updates from us. And I will see you in the next video. <laughs> see ya. Video of the button. People are there. People are there, that's right. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's right here. Great job, buddy. <laughs>